Hello, welcome to another video from 35 Archive. Today, for our 36th D&D 3.5 Prestige Class review, we're going to be looking at the Occult Slayer, another Prestige Class from the Complete Warrior Sourcebook. The Occult Slayer is driven to confront any arcane or divine spellcaster who crosses her path. Uh, occult Slayers believe that mortals are not responsible enough to wield magic, and thus they seek to slay or dispatch any spellcasters they come across. Um, this is a prestige class for characters that have a bone to pick with magic users of any sort. This could be a character whose uh, land was burned by wizards that were uh, you know, slave takers or something, or this could be a prestige class for uh, a victim of a holy crusade, um, or perhaps somebody whose family member was sacrificed by evil clerics. Really, the number of potential motivations for a character to hate spellcasters in D&D uh, is nearly endless. Um, occult slayers are going to be great at fighting spellcasters, and as a result, uh, fighters, barbarians, rangers, monks, and rogues are going to be the most common entrance to this prestige class. Uh, so, to become an occult slayer, you're going to need a plus 5 base attack bonus, 4 ranks in Knowledge Arcana, 3 ranks in Spellcraft, and then you're going to need the uh, Improved Initiative and Weapon Focus feats. So these are somewhat restrictive um, requirements. Weapon Focus is fairly common uh, for a feat for fighters to take. Improved Initiative a bit less so, but it's smart to have uh, in order to beat your Spellcaster foes at Initiative and take them out before they can cast a spell. Knowledge Arcana and Spellcraft ranks are going to be somewhat difficult for a fighter to take. You're going to have to take them cross-class, but really, even just a straight fighter could take this uh, Prestige class uh, after level 5. And as a result, I would rate the requirements as lightly restrictive. Yes, you're going to need some cross-class skill ranks, but only 7 overall. This is only going to eat up uh, 14 skill points that odds are you're not going to be doing a whole lot with otherwise. And depending on your other classes that you could be going into this as, uh, you might not even have to worry about that. Uh, so, um, as an Occult Slayer, you get full base attack bonus and a good will save, which is going to be a great boon to fighters entering this prestige class. You're essentially starting out with Iron Will for free. Um, while your Fortitude save won't improve, um, you're already going to have a pretty good one, and your reflex save is going to suffer the most, but with the number of hit points you'd have as a fighting type character, um, you're probably going to be able to soak up at least a couple of fireballs. You're going to get 2 plus intelligence modifier skill points, a d8 hit die, which will be a downgrade for fighters and barbarians, uh, but not for rangers, who can come into this prestige class, and they can also have uh, the favored magic foe, or a favorite enemy spellcaster, rather, feat, uh, which would allow them to do extra damage to spellcasters, which is going to be a nice complement for this prestige class. Um, so the numbers you're going to get from this prestige class are pretty good. Let's take a look at the features. At first level, you're going to get Magical Defense plus one, which gives you a plus one on all saving throws against spells or spell-like abilities. Uh, this increases to plus two at third level and plus three at fifth level. So this is nice to have. I mean, a lot of the saving throws that you're going to be making in D&D are going to be against spells anyway, or spell-like abilities. Uh, so this is going to be a nice little bonus, and it does help embody the Occult Slayer's focus on stealing himself, both mind and body, uh, against enemy spells. Also, at first level, you gain the Weapon Bond feature. You choose a particular weapon of at least Masterwork quality to focus your power on. Um... And then any successful attack you make with that weapon against a spellcaster or a creature with spellic abilities deals an extra 1d6 points of damage. And if you lose or destroy this weapon, uh, you're unable to use this ability until you bond with another weapon of the same kind, uh, the kind you had weapon focus in. I assume that's the implication. Um, and it has to be, again, of at least masterwork quality. And... Uh, if you do replace the weapon, you don't have to do this with the first one, but when you replace the weapon, you have to spend one day per character level practicing with the replacement to create a new weapon bond. And you can't adventure while doing this. 
So it's best to not lose your bonded weapon, but it is great to have a weapon that's going to do an extra d6 against spellcasters and a very large percentage of monsters as well. And this isn't going to be precision damage either. So it's going to be a nice little boost to your damage. And for the amount of investment you put into this prestige class, that's really not a bad benefit. At second level, you're going to gain Mind Over Magic. Uh, this allows you to rebound a spell or spell like ability targeted against you as a free action. It functions as the spell turning spell with caster level effectively equal to your occult slayer level plus five. So essentially your character level if you got into this prestige class after level five. Um, and this is going to let you reflect spells back on the caster, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, you can use this ability once per day at second level and twice per day at fourth level. And an enemy spellcaster probably isn't going to expect uh, a character wielding armor or wearing armor and wielding a sword to be able to reflect spells back on them. So this can be a pretty nasty surprise. Also at second level, you gain Vicious Strike. Uh, this isn't like the magic weapon ability. This instead allows an occult slayer who readies an attack action to disrupt the spellcaster to deal double damage if the attack hits. Uh, this is really great. And this is where your improved initiative feat comes into play. Uh, this allows you to ready an action if you want initiative. And then if your uh, spellcaster foe casts a spell, you can shoot them or slash at them. Odds are shooting at them with a ranged weapon. And uh, if you have a good composite bow, you can make it really difficult for even a good spellcaster to keep their spell. So you can be really, really good at harrying spellcasters with uh, this ability. Doubling your damage is going to oftentimes put that concentration DC out of reach for them. If you do manage to get up in melee with them, then it's going to be even better. You can power attack, and if you hit, you could be dealing, you know, 30 or 40 damage and they're just not realistically going to be able to make that concentration check, and they're going to lose their spell. At third level, you gain the Aura Vision uh, feature. Uh, this lets you see magical auras at a range of up to 60 feet as a free action, and it functions otherwise as the Detect Magic spell. Um, downside is you're not going to be able to determine the school of magic present, only the number of magical auras. Uh, you can't even determine the strength. But you will at least know if magic is present, so odds are you're going to be able to detect a spellcaster who might be laden down with a powerful magic staff, wands, pearls of power, rings of spell storing, and that sort of thing. Um, as well as being able to tell if there's something magical within a hoard of treasure. Yeah, you're not going to be able to uh, figure out whether it's abjuration or conjuration or necromancy, but you will at least be able to tell it's there. And this can help your party spellcaster assuming you can suffer the presence of one to be able to cast Detect Magic themselves. And it cuts down on the number of uses of Detect Magic that your party wizard will have to blow through. Or if you're in just a straight warrior campaign um, where you don't have that, you can at the very least figure out what's magical and maybe use common sense to figure out what to do with it from there. At level four, you gain Non-Detection Cloak. Uh, this is in some ways the weakest ability of the Prestige class. Uh, it makes you difficult to locate with divination such as clairvoyance, clairaudience, locate object, and other detection spells. You gain uh, protection from divination uh, equivalent to a non-detection spell equal to your class level. Again, only your class level, not your character level, uh, except that it only affects you and your possessions. Unfortunately, a persistent spellcaster trying to scry on you is probably eventually going to succeed, but it will cut out some lower level divinations and it will give you some protection. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit lackluster for a fourth level feature. Fortunately, at this point, you get your second use per day of Mind Over Magic, so that does help a little bit. And then finally, at level five, you gain Blank Thoughts. This allows you to induce a state of mental absence within yourself, and it allows you to become immune to mind-affecting effects, such as charms, compulsions, patterns, phantasms, and morale effects. So a lot of enchantment and illusion spells you're going to be able to straight up ignore. Uh, you can suppress or resume this ability as a free action in case there's somehow a beneficial one you wish to be subjected to. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to be immune to a fighter's greatest weakness, which is going to be mind-affecting spells such as hold person, hold monster, confusion, dominate person, dominate monster. Um, you know, even stuff like phantasmal killer uh, you're going to be immune to. And this kind of mental uh, focus is going to be 
you know, a really strong ability. And this on top of your other abilities to um, make yourself very resistant to spellcasters' spells, as well as deal some extra damage to them and foil their effects, is going to give you a pretty powerful suite of abilities to use against spellcasters. Now, obviously, you're going to want to have this prestige class uh, in a campaign where you're fighting a lot of wizards, clerics, sorcerers, but it's also just useful in general as a very large percentage of monsters are going to have spell-like abilities, and that percentage will only go up the higher level you get. Um, and while this prestige class perhaps could use some ability to stay in melee with spellcasters, as they can always five-foot step away from you if you're a melee-focused uh, character, um, you can get those sorts of abilities by other means, and the the number of great features that you get here for the relatively low investment definitely makes this one worth looking at. I would give this one four stars for concept and four stars for execution. It could be better, um, but as is, uh, it's a very very useful prestige class. The focus of the abilities, uh, they're a little bit spread out in what they do. Um, some of them aren't particularly powerful. Aura Vision and Non-Detection Cloak really aren't that great. Um, but the first couple of levels are going to be excellent. And really, if you're going to go in for two levels, in a lot of ways you might as well go in for five, as being immune to mind-affecting effects is going to be great for any fighter-type character. Yes, your will save is going to be getting better from this Prestige class, but... Uh, even setting that aside, the Blink Thoughts ability is just excellent to have. An extra d6 damage to many creatures uh, with your weapon is going to be great. And having a bonus on saving throws against spells that you can't just straight up ignore is going to be awesome as well. For only 5 levels, this Prestige class is definitely one worth recommending to any character that wants to be better at fighting spellcasters. And even just taking it in general... Um, is going to help you out more and more against monsters the higher you get in levels. So that's going to be about it for this D&D 3.5 Prestige Class review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on 3.5 Archive.